All right, three days of darkness. It's not in the apocalypse. The closest that we get in the New Testament uh, is the it's the fifth angel in the book of the apocalypse. It's Revelation 16.10. I'll put that on the screen for y'all to see it. And it describes the coming darkness that will come at a certain point in the apocalypse. It's Revelation or Apocalypse 16.10, and it reads, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom became dark, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So there certainly is something in the apocalypse about extreme darkness as a punishment on the ungodly, a punishment against the beast. It does not mention here the three days. Uh, that comes from private revelation and from the Old Testament, as we're about to see. But there is something in the eschatological plan that includes darkness as a punishment on those who serve Satan. That is, he poured out his vial on the seat of the beast. It's also important here to realize that uh, Scripture and the Holy Ghost are depicting the power of the beast the power of the Antichrist as a seat. This parallels in Catholicism in that Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Mary, assumed, is seated at the right hand of Christ. And the Pope, who is the successor of St. Peter, sits on the apostolic see, the see of Peter. So the seat in the Old Testament and in the New is the sign of authority. And here we have the angel pouring out this vial, this punishment, not on the beast, but on the seat of the beast. That is his place of authority, his place of teaching, his place of jurisdiction. And when the angel does that, the kingdom, his kingdom, the kingdom of the beast, not the kingdom of Christ, becomes dark. What's going on here in Apocalypse 16.10 the angel pouring out this vial on the seat of the beast and becoming uh, his kingdom becoming dark does harken back to something that we read in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there are the ten plagues. You'll remember that the Israelites were in Egypt and they were slaves. They were in bondage. And God finally brought about their redemption to buy them back out of Egypt and he raised up the prophet Moses. And we've all seen the movie Ten Commandments and Moses with his staff. And he says, let my people go. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Now, Pharaoh is an Old Testament type of the Antichrist, of the ungodly king, of the king who promotes idolatry in the worship of demons and persecutes the people of God. So that's who Pharaoh is, often in patristic literature, the devil is compared to Pharaoh. Uh, so Pharaoh is a type of the devil. He's a type of the Antichrist. He's the ungodly king. And so Moses, who is a type of Christ, he with his staff initiates the 10 plagues upon Egypt. Now I've put them up on the screen there on your left. And in Exodus 10.22, we read, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, very important here because it's not Moses doing the miracle. It's God and Moses is showing that. And there came horrible darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. Three days of darkness. So the idea of three days of darkness derives from the Old Testament. Again, in the New Testament, we don't see three days of darkness. We see three hours of darkness. And I'll get to that in a moment. We just see the fifth angel with the darkness after he pours out his vial on the seat of the beast. Now, these 10 plagues are first blood. This is when water turns to blood. Then there's the frogs. Then there's the gnats or the lice, depending on how you translate the Hebrew, and the flies. And then the plague upon the livestock, the cattle. Then the boils upon the flesh. Then the hail. Then the locusts. Then number nine is the three days of darkness and the death of the firstborn. Now, this is a parallel. It's a type pointing forward to 
Christ. Remember, Christ fulfills the entire Old Testament. Christ fulfills every jot and tittle of the Old Testament. Now, you'll see here, you have all of these plagues culminating in three days of darkness and the death of the firstborn. Now, think back to Good Friday. He has the passion. He's scourged. He carries the cross. And then we read in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 27, 45, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour. So we know in sacred scripture, I'll put it up on the screen so y'all can, we know from the gospels that before the death of the firstborn, look over there on the list on the left side of your screen, there's the three days of darkness and the death of the firstborn. We know that there were three hours of darkness over the whole earth, not just Jerusalem, it seems, and then the death of the firstborn. The firstborn who? The firstborn of God, Jesus Christ. So we see this fulfillment happening. And I think if these private revelations are true, we're going to get into the private revelations here next. If they're true, my read on this, again, I'm just a layman. I'm not a pope. I'm not a cardinal. I'm not anybody. But my read on this is, if you listen to Our Lady of La Salette, you realize the church is going to go into eclipse. Maybe it has already. Seems so. And you realize that the church will enter into a final passion. The church will enter into her own triduum. She will be conformed perfectly with her groom, Jesus Christ. And she will go through confusion. Peter will deny her three times. The apostles, who we know as the successors of the apostles, the bishops, will run away. Except for one-twelfth of them. That is St. John, the beloved apostle. A Judas Iscariot from the inner inner heart, the trust of the church, will betray her master. And we know, of course, Our Lady will be right there until the very end. And so many holy people have seen this parallel and said the church will be betrayed by a Judas. The bishops will run away. Peter will deny three times. But Mary will be there close to Jesus all the way to the end. That's the, that's the anchor that we all have to hold on to during this tar dark time. And just as there were three days of darkness under Moses, and there were three hours of darkness at the crucifixion of Christ, there will be in this passion of the church, three days of darkness that will purify the church. That's one thesis, one theory. Again, I'm not saying it's de fide, that this is dogma. I'm just trying to connect some dots here. There's a bunch of stars, and we're trying to find the constellation. And that's my suggestion. 